when we were doing lockdown a couple of years back, every Sunday I was doing Sierra Hotel One Tango set Sunday, and uh, I was using the GT868, the great chassis. That's great electronics, Taiwan, not great as in wonderful. And that is the kind of chassis used in the Fidelity 1000 CV, which is not the best set and was quite notorious for being a bleed over box. But really, the gone of the days of the, uh, you know, being used as every other house with, in a terrace property with the silver rods poking up. And certainly where I'm in the middle of nowhere, these actually work very well. Uh, they are a three and a half watt radio, so you don't you will never expect to get um, four watts. I have seen four watts on a couple of occasions, but that's because they must be uh, exceptional. You know, they are, not, they are a three and a half watt radio. Um, a lot of them will do two point seven watts, but it doesn't actually make much difference in reality. So, I've got one which we acquired. I think this one's working. We acquired this twenty years ago. And it's uh, it's got some expanding foam on the power lead, and this came off eBay for one pound and nine pence twenty years ago, and it was local to where Mark lives in Nottingham, and the vendor actually popped it in his electric cupboard, uh, and as a freebie because he turns out he only lived half a mile away, so that was a cheap purchase, and I did do some initial looking at that, and I think it works. We've also got here what looks to be complete Fidelity 1000 yeah it's got a meter as well and it's got the knobs and it's got the wrong capacitor there so that's something else we can have a look at today and if there's time I think Quotages came round with this which uses the same chassis um, this is the 868 version these are the 848 the, the two knob version of something else like the Eurosonic would be the 858 and then this is the 868 when you've got PA and uh, and dimmer. So they all use the same mic pinout which is uh, unique to these. Now this has clearly been left out in the rain for a few years and what we're going to do is I'm going to put that through the dishwasher because I'd love to resurrect this. I don't know if any of you have seen uh, and this is really people interested in, in television restoration. Uh, and in this country, one of the biggest problems is that really any television made before about 1965 isn't going to work, even with a set top box, because the standard change, you know, television was 625 lines uh, now, and it used to be 405 lines. Uh, and so if you're going to start working with really vintage televisions in this country, which are 405 lines, you've got to start buying in or making a standards converter etc and, and the cost rocket if you really want to watch that nine inch black and white picture from a bygone era so shango 66 has a very entertaining channel um in in america he's at los angeles and i've, I've seen one of his videos where he goes into the desert picks up a television chassis and something like this kind of standard uh, and actually gets it to kind of uh, to work ish so I think, uh, inspired by Shango 66, we'll we'll see whether we can do something with this. I don't care a toss about the fact it's full of rust. I'm, that doesn't matter. I'm going to pop the front off. I'm going to take the meter out. I'm going to run that through the dishwasher. So uh, that is what we're going to do. I wonder what cycle I should put it on. I think we'll put it on the vicious cycle. What do you reckon? I mean, this is obviously a scrap set and it's... It looks like it's even been run over. But I'd love to get that to do something, even if it just worked on PA. And uh, that is a possibility. And that one probably works anyway. So that's what we're going to do. And we can then hopefully do a scratchy corner test. These don't have cases, so if I get them to work well, we've got to just wait for a small scrap to turn up and, and nick the cases off. So I'm going to pause the video, and we'll start by putting that GT868 through the dishwasher. Okay, well that's actually, I've had my lunch in between, that's actually gone through the dishwasher and it looks all right. It's currently drying uh, with the help of a convector heater and an air conditioner. Now, that uh, front's been through the dishwasher, that front's been through the dishwasher, knobs have been through the dishwasher, that still looks, that's still got the plastic on it. 
sometimes they have no we're not lucky that time so I've got a new mic here I've already labeled it as great because that's what we're going to wire it for these have come uh, for Uniden the, about the only mics I seem to be able to get at the moment and when I opened the last one up to rewire it, it's a horribly stiff lead I was shocked to find that the, lay, the cable isn't screened so the fact that it's about 8 cores and only 4 are used I think that is the only thing that is stopping it producing a hum really disappointing how can you say it's a mic cable and it's got no uh, no screen in it so these have come as I say wired for Uniden with a plug on the end they weren't that cheap they work seem to sound all right when we've had them but um, oh, I can't even remove the uh, there we go so as you can see there is no screen shocking so I wonder what they've uh, used for what I'd expect red and black to be transmit and receive but um, what of the use for common and, and audio I'd expect yellow for audio and blue for common but let's see what they've done so if I look up on my chart um, Uniden it's pin out 2 so it is ah commons black audio's yellow transmits red and receive is blue it's not quite how I would have thought so we want it to be um, great 868 so it's it's the 4 so yeah every single one is different I'll see if I can just hold this in my hand rather than use the jig today just because of uh, you being able to see so we'll just take them we'll take that one off we'll take that one off so that blue which was received we'll put over to where the black one was so that's one done and the black one will swap over to where receive was and then that rem re that leaves us with transmit and audio so they just need swapping over as well it's not as hard as I thought so we'll put the red to there. Never be tempted to blow on the solder to make it solidify quicker. You'll end up with a dry joint. There's always going to be one, isn't there, that doesn't want to quite go. So we'll check that. Receive is blue, transmit is red, audio is yellow, and common is black. So I'll put that back together. So as I say, I think this works. I think we did. We went through it twenty odd years ago before we were doing these videos, and. Uh, I think this is the set that Mark wanted to call me. This is Mark ZX2, who is my friend who I worked at Nottingham Radio with for many years. And um, he came here to stay the weekend, and uh, he had I'd given him a key because I was at work, and uh, he wanted to call me over something or other, and uh, he knew that I was going to be somewhere Grantham Way, and this is seven and a half miles away. And um, and I knew he was likely to turn up before I got back from work. Anyway, suddenly 
CB on channel 31 and it was Mark calling and there was no CB as a base station like we have that base station these days uh, that Harrier there's no CB set up and he pulled I think this this very fidelity and uh, and called me on it because he knew that out of all the CBs that were here this is more likely to work because <laughs> they are reliable however horrible so that switch is seized now this has been in a room which has had a roof problem and so we've kind of had to take everything out of that room uh, the roof will get sorted I did ask the roofing people while they were building the new building to give me a price for doing this very small roof on this building but they didn't bother so uh, I don't know, we'll probably end up doing it ourselves so it looks nice and clean we'll worry about that switch later on this up to our famous crocodile clips, the ones which I regularly short out. So I know this hasn't been switched on for at least 15 years. So we'll connect the test instrument I can't find my service notes for Fidelity 1000 which is typical but I have been able to print off another service manual and I don't think there's going to be anything which I can't remember from two years ago. That was once a green sticker, but it's faded. Okay, so there we are on channel 20. So we'll plug our mic in. We've got receive it. I'd want to just look what the signal generator's on. Well, it's quite a way out, but um, as we all know, these uh, will receive quite widely. Yeah, that's now. Actually, it's nothing like as good as I would expect. Plug the test instruments in. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 0.65 microvolts for 12 decibels sine. So it is all right. We'll come to that. We'll just see what the output power is. Probably about 2.7 watts. They usually are. 2.3 watts. Hang on, we're at 12.3 volts, so that's not fair. Because I was doing that um, porter pack, wasn't I, last? So it's just gone beyond 3 watts. It's exactly 3 watts. So that's fine, but we're still going to go through it. And then we'll worry about that switch. I'd love to do an on the air test with this. Just to see if we've got some transmitted audio. One, two, one, two, while. A little bit over the top of three and a half. I don't know what I was thinking when I set that up. So I'll go and get the service manual and we'll make some notes. Okay, so we'll start on transmit. Now, if it's off frequency, we'll have to go in the can. Because I know this has previously been serviced, that it will be lined up in there. Perhaps if, we have, if we've got time to look at those knackered chassis that I'd like to have a look at, um, we'll be going in there to make sure the complicated synthesizer is aligned but this one's going to be all right so we'll look at the frequency and it should be 2779125 so it's slightly low so we'll just pop the power off open up the can I'm thinking, oh, it's only 20 years since I did this one. Shouldn't have drifted in 20 years, should it? Let's 
switch it back on. So it's a trimmer capacitor here, it's TC202 or CT201 even. Hope it will go. So do it slightly high, so it's 27.791 to 6 toggling 7. Put the screening cam back on later, and now we'll run through the transmitter. You know what? Have I got picture in picture on? I haven't, have I? So we show you that again. 2779126 toggling 7. We'll go back to the meter and see if we can get more than 3 watts. It really doesn't matter if we can't. The service manager says anything more than 1.7 is acceptable. Now that said, if these radios are doing really, really low power, it's that resistor there that has uh, got, um, if you've got a high SWR, this resistor seems to take the brunt of it. So avoiding these, as done with the VTVM, vacuum tube voltmeter or FET voltmeter, uh, we'll now move on to the lineup. And the other one to avoid is this one, which is the, um, which needs setting up with a uh, spectrum analyzer. So when you see me going down these and missing that, I haven't. It's not part of the transmit lineup. If, you, of course, you know it's had finger trouble, then, of course, you need to put a spectrum analyzer on it. So here goes. Considering most new radios come out of the factory doing 2.7 watts, this isn't exactly being tight on the power. Looks like a broken core. That's not because I've broken it in the years gone by, it's because not needed to be changed. Now then, where's my trimming tool for that? I don't think it's the white one. No. I think it's one side of the blue. Yeah. I think the best thing to do is to try and get rid of that broken bit. That's causing it to wedge. I wonder if we can move it down. No, we can't do anything with it, can we? There we are. So having broken away the broken bit, we can now move it. And of course it was in the correct position anyway. So what I just want to check is at 14.4 volts what the transmitted power is so we're now at 14.4 volts and it's 3.2 watts so that's what it'll do when it's 
when it's actually charging in a car. So that's within spec. So on the meter, it needs to say 4 watts, and it is doing. I know it sounds like a bit of a cheat, but that's how they're set. That's the preset for the meter. And then the deviation is the preset there at SVR3. We'll get the little oscillator out. Mm, it, doesn't read. it reads about right there, but it was a bit over the top. We'll drop it to two. One, two, wallow, one, two, one, two, one, two, wallow. It's a bit better. Uh, right. So that's the transmit side. So that was straightforward, but of course it's the receive, which is the absolute swine on these sets. So, here goes. That could do with a, a bit of a spray. There we go. That, we're going to have to sh change that switch. Um, I'm hoping we've got a scrap chassis. Well, I can see we've got a... No, that's the one we're working on next. We, we're going to have a scrap chassis. I'm sure we can pinch one of those up. Uh, low power isn't adjustable on these sets. You get what you're given. Let's see whether we can... No, I can't force that. So, receive. Let's look what we can do with that. It's absolutely fine as it is, but um, it's supposed to be 0 0.7 microvolts, but it doesn't say in relation to what. But they're, they're not insensitive at all. In fact, they're, they're, this is the bit of the downfall with the poor filtering. Um, the, um, the you know the, the sensitivity. Um, it's like with the Uniden. They're not anything like a sensitive disease but they're better on bleed over of course they're a better quality set don't get me wrong but um, these can be a bit too sensitive for their own good I think when we bought this originally the only thing wrong was the deviation pot was actually missing or snapped or something like that right we're going to put the deep we're, we're gonna we can't really set these like we normally would Until we had the cyanide meter, we had to. We've done this before. We've used the other bench, and we've set these up as per the manual, um, with the vacuum tube voltmeter, with the sweep generator for the maximum S curve symmetry. All that kind of stuff. We've done all that. We've demonstrated that. But uh, using the cyanide meter uh, eliminates all that, and we seem to be getting uh, better results as well. So I'll just see. If if we can go to the oscilloscope and whether that actually does anything for us. That's yes, that one we want. Turn that off. So looking at the upside down layout, it's um, bum, 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 bum. four and five which are these two down here
So I seem to have got five with that method, but we need to do the other one with the cyanide meter. And it needs to be quite a signal on the cyanide meter for this adjustment, if I remember. Or I might be wrong. Have a look. Let's turn that down to there. Turn the signal up again. Let's put it on 12 dB. And let's just now look at this. So we're getting a different result with this method. I think we need to use the cyanide meter rather than anything else. We can get 20. Okay, so now we'll, we'll go to the front end. These more, sound more like AM, and the, the meter on these, the S meters, it actually is AM. No, sorry, not the meter, the squelch. The squelch is AM. We'll go to 4 dB on the meter, and then we'll see if we can improve it on there. As ever, we're trying not to saturate the receiver. So that's definitely best. Nev scored a fraction there. And then we move on to these IF ones. I think we'll put a bigger signal on for these. Put it about 10 dB. Now that doesn't that doesn't respond well to that method, so we'll move on to the next one. doesn't respond well to that, so let's go back to the correct method of minimum sensitivity. And no, it doesn't respond well to that. Let's go back to the 12. I'm actually looking at the oscilloscope and the sound meter together. I think we're about there. So a lot of faff. I'm very unconventional. So let's see what we've got. 412 dB cyanide. Well, we've actually got 0 0.35 microvolts, so we have improved it. So let's see if the squelch functions. I don't think it's adjustable on these. Jolly well, I hope it is because that's dreadful. So, receive. We've done all those. And then it gives you no more instructions. Just to be handy, like. I've got this very faint circuit diagram. Oh, 
Oh yeah, SVR1 is Squelch preset. So that's Squelch. So I think SVR2 is going to be S-meter. Find the meter. Yes, we are two's meter. Okay. So we really need to knock that squelch one so that we can actually receive something. There we are. Now it's too sen. Yeah, it's too sensitive now. We'll get it right eventually. That's now too coarse. That's spot on. 100 microvolts is bringing it in. So I put the camera to the attenuator, so we're at 30 microvolts there, 100 microvolts on full squelch. So now we'll turn the squelch down on the radio, and let's turn the signal generator off, put it to standby to 0.3 of a microvolt, set the squelch to threshold, switch the signal generator back on. You can just hear that. So it's coming in at 0 0.3, it's leaving about 0 0.25. So it's sensitive enough, but it's not good hysteresis. But there you go. So, S9 signal, 100 microvolts. And let's see what the meter's reading. Well, it's over the top, so I do just need to adjust that. So with SVR2, we'll just bring that down so that it reads... S9, which is there. And there we have it, that set should be working fine. Good. I'm glad we've been able to get through that rap pretty rapidly because I want there to be. No oh, I've not put that screen back, have I? That would be lazy. I think there was only one screw in this set, wasn't there? Hopefully I can find the bag of screws. Okay, so we've managed to find the RS, uh, what, 4830934 of the black uh, M3 screws we're using at the moment. Hello. And uh, there we go. Right, we'll take the aerial off it. We'll unplug the. I still haven't done that, have I? I haven't done the uh, low power thing. So that's something I'm going to have to do behind the scenes. Now, so I'm really wanting to push on to do more than one set today, just for a bit of fun. Now these are very sensitive. Let's switch picture in picture off. And 
all those people who are normally off frequency, hey presto they're not off frequency because these are so wide. One nano Roger. Did we get a Roger D there? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think these are all coming in from Nottingham from 35 miles away. So there you have it. That's the Fidelity 1000, which we knew kind of worked and just wanted a quick check over. And I'll put it on one side because we do need to do that low power switch. However, I want to do a scratchy corner test with Mr. Chippy as well with this. So we'll get that disconnected and we'll move on to the next one so I took the front off this because it was filthy so it's not beautiful why is the meter hanging out oh, perhaps it's perhaps the front that holds them in We've got no case for this. I think Mr. Chippy's testing guitar amplifiers by the sound of that. go in there does it not quite sure what's stopping it apart from everything being broken there's well, not much point that screw being in because it certainly isn't doing anything I know we've shown some techniques of bodging fronts but uh, I don't think we need to bother with this as a demonstration put that one in can't we I mean, this looks like it's had quite some use before it's been deemed as scrap. I don't like to see an old-fashioned capacitor in there. 125 volts in position... C94. Oh, of course, they don't tell you capacitors, do they? No, they wouldn't do that. Why is that other set? Oh, it's still drying, isn't it? Anyway, we'll come back to that. So we'll see whether this does anything. So apart from no case, it looks complete. Oh, we'll put the knobs on, can't we?
We've got a shed here in the outside, and there's a CB Errol and a CB set in the shed, which isn't locked, and anybody can come in the garden and use the CB in the shed. It's a little small, like a sentry box shed, and it's a Fidelity 2001 with no uh, with no case on it. <laughs> so we're using a set in this kind of state. Right, we'll connect it up to the test set. Connect it up to the crocodile clips that we enjoy shorting together. A switch on. Absolutely nothing. No fuse. They are twenty millimeter fuses. All right, I better go on a fuse expedition. Okay. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? So we've got a duff on and off switch. You switch it on and it goes straight off again. So I'll switch the power off. Not sure we can get into that. Might be able to. Might just be able to. Hopefully. I'll tell you what, if we can remove. I don't want all the springs falling out of the switch. If we can kind of. Unclip one of the four retaining studs. I'm just prize enough of it apart to get the service old switch cleaner spout. I can't speak. Service old switch cleaner spout in like that. We may be able to fix it. Maybe we'll put some on the volume control while we're at it. So I'll pop that back down, that lug. Work the switch a few times and see whether that's cured it. Good. It has. Well, I can see the meter, the meter deflect. So have we got receive? Hmm. <laughs> got something happening. Plug the mic in. Press transmit. Oh, it is kind of transmitting all the time. Whoa, this is. Uh... Yeah, this isn't well. <laughs> Probably why it's been scrapped. It's transmitting and receiving at the same time. You 
see when you buy these things you have, you don't know why they've been abandoned do you what I'm looking for I think Mr Chippy's had his toothbrush back I think he was moaning about that yesterday I'm just checking we've not got anything absolutely ridiculous So what we'll do, I think we'll just look how the other one's drying. Okay, so this is the rusty one. And the first thing we're going to have to do... Is that a cracked printed circuit? It's probably been run over this. What a cracked printed circuit and all this corrosion so it's much better having been through the dishwasher don't get me wrong it's now revealed the crack and we'll get some isopropyl alcohol on it Let's see whether we can remove some of this nastiness there's no output transistor there there's no audio IC there there's not really much hope is there but we'd know we'd find out whether it generates the channels doesn't we'll take that can off and see whether we've got a mess in there as well Mind you, at least these don't suffer from dry joints. So we're going to have to deal with the crack printed circuit board. So the crack ends there. It's there, it's here, I'm just going to put solder blobs on them, it's only a bit of fun for me, not sure whether we've got anything there. We're not going to hear anything because there's no audio IC. We're not going to see it transmit because the driver and the output transistors are missing. But if it's generating the channels, we will be able to monitor that. And if it is generating the channels, we'll put some of the missing parts back. Now you'd put bridging wires in if this was a customer's repair. solder isn't good enough that's got rid of our cracks 
at this stage. I think we might have a crack down the other side as well. Somebody hated this so much they've run over it in the car. That track's well corroded. They just, I think, do they go to a shield plate that's not in? Right, well, I'll tell you what, we'll power it up. I'll go to the speaker. No fuse in there, what a surprise. So remember we've taken the meter out of this because obviously going through the dishwasher with a meter was stupid so I don't want to destroy something which is hard to get. Okay. So no smoke. So we'll switch our monitor receiver on. Because if the if this is producing the frequencies, then we will hear it in our monitor receiver. So I'm on channel twenty. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Well, there you go. So it is generating the frequencies. Well, in that case, I'll look for a scrap set, which is scrapper than this scrap set, and we'll take a couple of uh, transmitter parts out of that. And uh, wow. <laughs> to be honest, once that's working, you've, you're a third of the way there. Okay, we're a bit scuppered here. We're because I don't now have any scrap chassis for um, GT858868 because we've built every set up. The last one of these we did is a bit of fun was a scrap chassis with a knob missing. And again, we've only got the, the chassis. And we did that as a demonstration about 18 months ago. And of course, that's now a worker. So <laughs> um, what we're going to do, I'm going to make, we'll turn this into a two-part. We've the whole object was to tune up that uh, Fidelity 1000, which we've done. Uh, we know we've got the really faulty one, but I don't want to scrap that because it's going to be something really silly. And this one, we know is transmitting uh, as far as... Uh, as far as into its own insides. So I just wonder, if we put the meter back in... Uh, I just wonder if the thing is actually receiving up to the meter. So I'm going to see if we can fit that back. Well, the answer is in fact no, because when I look at the meter, it's jammed, because this has been out in the rain for probably years. So we may be able to fix that in the future, but um, I, we, we can't do anything quickly. So what we'll do is we'll switch this CB back on, and it's on channel 20, and what I've done is to connect this oscilloscope to the volume control. So hopefully I've got it in the right position. And we'll put the signal generator on.
honestly can't see anything there. Another thing to do is let's put the oscilloscope across the the meter terminals and just see what to, if we get anything there. And again, I can't see anything there. So I, I can't prove at this stage whether we have got receive on the set. But it's worth to me um, messing about. But I don't want to put new parts in it. You know, we should you know, kind of put £12 worth of parts in on something which is a bit of silliness. So we don't want to use a scrap chassis. So we'll end this video with the fact that this is transmitting uh, into our test receiver. Testing one, two, testing one, two. And we'll do a part two to this in the future. So I'll put this video out. And this is our resurrection of a Sonic GT868. That's the front. Totally knobless. But I've seen worse fronts than that, to be honest. And we'll do a part two some point in the future when we can um, get a scrap chassis in a, in a box of junk somewhere. It's funny, isn't it? You know, you get scrap chassis of all kinds of sets but I've had such a success in sorting GT858 and 868 sets out that we've used all the scrap chassis and uh, turned them into working sets so uh, we'll do an on the air test with the Fidelity 1000 and we'll catch you on the next video which is a customer's repair and it's a current model President Taylor I think it is um, and he's disappointed at its performance, having bought it new and wants me to optimise it. That's what we will be doing this week. This was just a bit of fun. So thanks for watching the Fidelity CB1000 from 1981. It's supposed to be the worst radio ever made, but uh, I uh, beg to differ on that.